Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and we are currently in TRAPPIST-1 system where we're taking a look at one of the hypothetically habitable planets of TRAPPIST-1. In today's video I actually wanted to talk a little bit about how various moons around various planets can actually be used to use the moon's reflectivity, also known as albedo, to basically provide energy and power on the dark side of a planet. In other words, we're going to talk about how you could potentially create sun on the other side of TRAPPIST-1 planets. Welcome to What The Math. So one of the problems in the TRAPPIST-1 system is that even if these planets are actually habitable and they have water and they have atmosphere is that uh, they are all without exception most likely tightly locked in other words if i were to stop my simulation right now and just look at the planet you would notice that the same face is always sort of pointing towards the trappist one star in other words here there is permanent darkness or is there so I'm actually gonna take you to a world I recently discovered in the Space Engine where it kind of gives you an idea of how powerful a moon's reflectivity can be. And the reason I'm talking about moons is that if TRAPPIST-1 planets actually have moons around them, there's actually a chance for us to potentially find a planet or two that may actually have the dark side that's not so dark after all, and that may even have relatively warm temperature. So, this is actually a system very, very close to the central um, black hole in our galaxy. And there is this planet right here that is totally procedurally generated, but it has a very, very curious moon orbiting around it. As a matter of fact, if you actually run the simulation in real time, you'll see that this moon moves really, really fast around its parent planet. Uh, now, right now, this is basically is identifying as a warm, airless asteroid. And you can kind of see that it's moving so fast that you can even see the planet move. If I accelerate this just a little bit, uh, you'll see how fast we're talking about here. So this moon is orbiting around its um, parental body that doesn't really have any atmosphere or really anything that you would call habitable. But there is an interesting phenomenon that this moon is creating. This moon is very reflective. It has a very high albedo, um, and basically it's very mirror-like. We, uh, in our solar system, we have quite a lot of uh, bodies that are not very reflective, but we also have a few that are super reflective. One of the most reflective moons in our solar system is Enceladus. It's basically 99% reflective, meaning that it actually uh, absorbs only 1% of light and the rest is reflected, making it almost like a mirror, or at least in terms of uh, producing a lot of bright light. On the other hand, um, our own moon is actually relatively dark. It's only uh, producing about 22% reflectivity. But in this system, and this is actually where it gets really interesting, if I, if I focus myself on the... Uh, planet, oh, and by the way, in the back right there, you see a very, very bright patch of stars. This is the global root cluster where um, the central black hole is actually located. So this system is a pretty cool system to visit. Anyway, so what we're going to take a look at is we're going to actually take a look at how much light is produced by this moon right here. So right now, if I run this a little bit faster, you'll see that a little bit of light is actually produced as a patch on the dark side of this planet. Now, even though the reflectivity right now is not maximum possible reflectivity, I can actually go ahead and change this in the game by manually adjusting the brightness of this object, but also increasing the actual albedo. Now, watch what happens if I just boost this to the limit. In other words, making this practically a mirror-like object. So now that I've actually increased its brightness, uh, or at least its reflectivity, you'll see that as soon as it passes over this dark patch right here, which I'm going to move closer to, it's actually going to create quite a dramatic effect. As a matter of fact, it's almost as if this was uh, a miniature star. Now, it doesn't really create 
um, enough light to, I guess, support life unconditionally. But if you have a bunch of these moons orbiting around a planet that's tidally locked and that has a dark side, you could potentially have um, an environment that produces enough light for basic life to exist and to sustain itself. So let's see what this looks like if we just stand on the dark side and look into the skies and just see this uh, moon pass right above us. So let's just uh, wait for it to get here and watch what happens to the actual ground. You can see that it's so bright that it actually creates light pretty much everywhere here. Now, this is obviously an extreme example, but not only is it possible to produce this artificially, it's also possible that this is something that we could naturally find in the systems that actually have tidally locked objects. So here, let's just run it again. Um, every time the moon passes, and it actually does this every few um, hours, it actually produces quite a lot of light. So almost as if this was a second sun. But since this is actually a tidally locked object, this side that you see right here, so that side right here, never actually receives actual sunlight or starlight, that is. It the only light it gets is really only from the reflection of this moon. Now, I was actually lucky enough to find this completely by accident, uh, but I'm sure somewhere out there, there are planets that have several such moons, and they might even produce a lot more light that way. So this is actually a pretty cool phenomenon. Now, our own moon also produces reflectivity, and it actually even produces a little bit of um, warmth that reaches our planet Earth. It's not a lot, but you can technically measure it. And the um, if you do the math behind it, the actual amount of power and amount of energy that's produced by reflectivity, our, our own moon that reaches Earth, is equivalent to about one one thousandth of a single degree. In other words, it's something like a one um, millikelvin. It's not a lot, but if you were to have a lot of these, and if the moon was closer and more reflective, it would actually produce enough energy to warm up the dark side and create livable, habitable conditions here. Not all life might survive there, but some life might. And so this actually does create a possibility for TRAPPIST-1 system, as long as there's moons there that are reflective, to have a very interesting type of a habitable environment. Well, that's really all I wanted to say in this video, and I wanted to show you how moons can actually create very interesting reflective phenomena on the dark side of tidally locked planets. And here is one such example. Maybe in the future video we'll find a planet that has a bunch of these, but for now that's the only one I could find. And this is actually a procedurally generated planet, you can see its designation right there on top, um, but nevertheless a really cool object as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.